Up to 80% of women with PCOS have an underlying condition called insulin resistance, which is responsible for many of the problems they experience. Absent or infrequent periods, acne, excess body hair, and weight gain are all related to the effects of insulin resistance. The good news is it can be successfully treated. Insulin is a hormone which allows our body's cells to take in glucose from our bloodstream. Under normal conditions, insulin is produced by the pancreas, an organ just behind the stomach. When the level of sugar in the blood rises after a meal, the pancreas releases insulin into the blood. Insulin then helps our cells take in the sugar from the bloodstream and directs the cells to either burn the sugar right away for energy production or store the sugar as glycogen for later use. But it turns out that the actions produced by insulin require the assistance of what we call second messengers. There are actually two different second messengers, one made from myo-inositol and the other from dechiro-inositol. Inositols are sugar alcohols, similar to mannitol or sorbitol. We get inositols in our diet primarily from fruits and vegetables, and we can also make them in our body. Each step of insulin's action, bringing glucose into the cell, burning it for energy or storing it for later use, requires a specific balance between these two different inositol-based messengers. Here's what that looks like under normal conditions, and then we'll see how the process sometimes goes wrong. In this illustration, we see a cell and the surrounding bloodstream. On the surface of the cell membrane is the insulin receptor. After a meal, the level of glucose in the blood rises, which causes the pancreas to release insulin into the bloodstream. Insulin binds to the cell's insulin receptor, which activates it, and causes it to release second messengers, which may contain either myo-inositol or dechiro-inositol. The second messengers first allow glucose to enter the cell, and then it will either be burned for energy or stored as glycogen. This is what happens under normal conditions. So what can go wrong here? Well, let's go back to that point right after a meal. The glucose levels in the blood are rising. If the pancreas fails to respond, then insulin levels in the blood will be too low. This makes it impossible for cells to take in glucose, and the level of glucose will then build up in the blood, a condition that we call hyperglycemia. This is what happens in type 1 diabetes. Under other conditions, insulin production by the pancreas may be completely normal, but when it binds to and activates the insulin receptor, the release of the two inositol second messengers isn't normal. It may release too little of one or too much of the other. This makes it difficult for glucose to enter the cell. And again, it will build up in the blood, once again, what we call hyperglycemia. However, in this case, since the pancreas is normal, it responds to the increase in blood sugar levels by producing more insulin which causes a condition called hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin in the blood. This is what happens in the condition we call insulin resistance. It affects individuals with PCOS, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and diabetes of pregnancy. Individuals with insulin resistance have elevated blood sugar levels and elevated blood insulin levels. In women with PCOS, the elevated level of insulin in the blood causes problems in the ovary. First, too much insulin causes the ovary to produce testosterone, the primary male hormone, which causes the skin and hair issues so many women with PCOS struggle with. Second, the excess insulin causes the level of myo-inositol in the ovary to drop, which leads to missed or absent periods and poor egg quality. The good news is that insulin resistance can be corrected 
through the use of insulin sensitizers. Metformin, a drug originally developed for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, has been prescribed for PCOS patients for many years. Unfortunately, it does cause significant side effects for many women. More recently, studies have proven that inositol supplements can restore the normal balance of second messengers and reduce insulin resistance in women with PCOS. These studies have shown that inositol supplementation can restore ovulation and reduce the overproduction of testosterone. Inositol supplements are affordable, safe, and generally free of side effects. The best results have been realized by supplementing with a blend of myo-inositol and d in a 40 to 1 ratio. A total of 4 grams daily appears optimal, usually taken 2 grams in the morning and 2 grams in the evening. This regimen can restore ovulation in as little as 3 months. Improvements in testosterone-related symptoms such as hair and skin issues may take up to six months. So to summarize, insulin resistance is an underlying cause of many of the problems associated with PCOS, but it can be successfully treated. Inositol supplementation is safe, simple, and affordable. And although it may take several months to produce results, is an effective option for most women.